Hello and welcome to worship with Highline United Methodist Church on this All Saints Sunday. It's a day that we celebrate those who have died and gone on into eternal glory ahead of us. And so we will be celebrating a few of the folks we know from this congregation or our community later in the service during communion. And I encourage you to remember for yourself those people who are meaningful to you in your faith and in your life, and for those that we mourn and continue to grieve, uh, but we know are present with us, especially in communion. Um, and so we'll be doing that later in the service. One announcement that I need to make is that we have our annual charge conference meeting, and that is Monday, uh, November 2nd at 7 p.m. If you need the online Zoom link, you can contact our church office and we will get that to you. Um, so we hope to see you in that meeting. Let us begin our worship. Lord, you marry me. 
us, O Lord, that we may be meek, that we may hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we may be merciful, that we may be pure in heart, that we may be peacemakers, that we may rejoice and be glad. Bless those who have gone before us, for they have led the way to you. Amen.
Jesus teaches on a mountain. All sorts of people went to see Jesus. Children, mothers, fathers, grandmas, and grandpas. They all wanted to hear what he was teaching. Jesús enseña en una montaña. Todo tipo de gente fue a ver a Jesús. Niños, niñas, mamás, papás, abuelas, abuelos, ellos querían escuchar lo que él estaba enseñando. Bye, amiguitos. Soy yo otra vez. Ese es mi altar. Hoy es el Día de los Muertos. ¿Qué te parece a mí? Bye, amiguitos. Good morning, church. Please join me in the reading of the gospel. We'll be reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's All Saints Day, and we are using the Beatitudes um, from Matthew. When I was young, I was under the impression that the Beatitudes didn't really apply to me. Um, it referred to the people that Jesus was talking to in his time. Uh, but we were in a different place now, in a different age, and so it didn't really apply to us the same way. As I have gotten older and realized that the reason for that, the reason I was taught that, whether it was overtly or in subtle ways, is that the Beatitudes go against the dominant white American culture of prosperity. And so when we look at this and think, what does it mean that Jesus says, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. And we know that righteousness can be um, translated or interchanged with justice. Those who thirst for justice. Those, blessed are those who are merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are you who are persecuted for righteousness sake. If you're persecuted for being just, we have to think on a day of all saints, who are those people that have gone on into eternity who stood for these values? 
the values of justice and mercy and peace. People who could humble themselves. People who could stand up to the oppressors, willing to be persecuted for justice. And in this time, I know on almost the eve of our national election, many of us are worried. Many of us are uncertain of what will come. And many of us feel quite strongly which side we want to be on. But the peacemakers stand in the gap. Justice stands in the gap. It's not one side winning over the other side. But it's listening to God and finding our way forward in the way of Jesus, not in the way of one political party over another. This week I received a message from uh, someone I met this summer. Uh, well, actually the sister of someone I met. Uh, there was a woman who was in the shelter uh, at the church this summer. And she came to me when I came through the church one afternoon and asked if she could pray in the sanctuary. And the staff were not letting people come into the sanctuary unattended. Um, and they said they had to ask me. And so she did. And so I accompanied her into the sanctuary. She uh, had rituals that she followed uh, when she crossed the threshold into the sanctuary. She removed her shoes. She walked up um, towards the front. Uh, she kneeled and she bowed and she said her prayers. She was a, originally a refugee from Eritrea and her family had fled. Her father had uh, fought as a rebel in the Civil War in the late 70s, early 80s, and their family fled to Sudan. They were Christian, uh, Orthodox Christians from Eritrea, and were not necessarily welcome in the Sudan that was mostly Muslim. And so they applied for asylum in the US and Germany and their family was given papers to come to the United States. And so they settled in the central district of Seattle. I learned that the trauma uh, that she suffered haunted her in ways that caused her to um, become an alcoholic, and she fought that most of her adult life. But she did incredible work in the community. She was an organizer. She opened a restaurant, and it was called Hidmo. And Hidmo in their uh, Eritrean language means home. And so her restaurant became a home in the Central District for the youth and young adults of all ages. She did incredible outreach in the schools um, to mentor East African youth who are resettling in, in the United States. She is someone I think of when I think of the Beatitudes of a peacemaker. She was telling the story of when the Central District began to, uh, to become gentrified. Uh, lots of new people were moving into the Central District. A lot of white people who had not uh, lived in the Central District 
were coming there and because of the activity at her restaurant, a lot of people coming and going, it was open um, into the evening for music and art and they did a lot of spoken word. Um, so the neighbors, the white neighbors were concerned and felt threatened by this activity that was going on at her restaurant and contacted the police. So the community service officer showed up at her restaurant and it's ironic that she's trying to create a home away from home for East African youth. And that felt threatening to the white um, neighbors moving into the area. And so as a community organizer that she was, she invited them to an open house and they introduced them to what was actually going on in the restaurant and then as a group committed to having regular monthly neighborhood meetings to discuss topics and issues that were of concern for the neighborhood. And so as a true, humble peacemaker, someone who stood for justice for her community, um, found a way to build a bridge and to draw in the very people that were afraid of her people and the restaurant and the activity of music and um, community that they were experiencing that, in that place. So I lift up Rawa uh, because uh, her sister had had contacted me to let me know that she had passed away. She had died in late August. So not long after I met her, um, she died. And so it's striking to me uh, that there was a reason. There was a reason that I crossed paths with her um, her sister reached out to me to thank the church for having the shelter here uh, for people like her sister who needed it at that time. And she introduced me to all of the good, strong organizing work that her sister and her family has been involved in here in the Seattle area. And so I got to know the deeper story of the person that I met very briefly one day in a shelter. And I would never have understood the depth of her struggle and what she lived with and what she was able to overcome and do in the community in spite of it all. And it, it adds to what I feel we are being drawn to as a church community, that we are being shown what mental health needs there are in our community. And it's not just one particular cultural group or ethnic group. It's not um, an issue of the homeless. Mental health often leads to homelessness. Uh, it's not the homeless who experience mental illness, um, but it is a cause sometimes of homelessness. As we ponder what's happening with this pandemic and where we are in our world right now, what's happening um, to our country in our elections just days away, most of us are feeling some sense of anxiety or stress, fear, possibly anger, and we are the very people that Jesus is talking to in the Beatitudes. And it reminds us not that we have to be poor or not that we have to be something that we are not, but we should strive towards 
the values of peacemaking, being humble, meekness is humility. Uh, We can strive to be merciful. We can mourn and not have to put on a strong front and pretend that we're just fine. But what if we actually mourn and cry with those who are suffering and allow ourselves to actually mourn for ourselves and, and show our own suffering? It's not easy. And I know that um, in this time, many of us are feeling it. And there's this, this idea that there's other people who are worse off than us, so we, we don't, um, we push ours down and try to focus on others that need more than we do. But we're not really in community with them if we're putting ourselves above by thinking that we're not as bad off as someone else. So how do we be community with one another? How do we let the saints, the people that have gone on before us, who now can see clearly, how do we let them speak to us now? How do we let them guide us as Jesus guides us? How do we look to their lives to see how they lived? I believe that our church is being called into a deeper ministry around mental health um, and building community, um, being a home away from home, connecting with our neighbors, connecting with people who are different from ourselves, building that community. I love that Hidmo means home, and that restaurant created open houses for the neighborhood. How can we have open houses for God's house in our neighborhood. How can we be the peacemakers and those who thirst for justice for our neighbors, for ourselves, for our community? And what would that look like? In a few moments, we will celebrate communion. And I invite you to do that with me if you have bread and juice um, available to you in your home, or you can use water as well. The act of communion is truly a home away from home. It's our hidmo with God. It's our place of refuge. It's our place of community, of connectedness, with all that's come before us and all that will follow us in the future. It's God's time. It's a place of interconnectedness that crosses all boundaries of time. Imagine this place of peace and hope and love expanding out of this time we have together into this coming week. How can we carry with us the light odds, peace and hope, be the bearers of that in our neighborhoods and to the people around us as we hear of others fearing for what might be coming, can we be the peacemakers that stand in the gap? 
let it be so. Amen. Gracious God, we give thanks for this holy day of celebrating the saints. We give thanks for those who have come before us. And we ask for your healing and your comfort as we mourn again and our grief feels fresh for our loved ones and the people that we hold dear who are no longer physically with us. God, we lift up to you this country, the elections that are happening this coming week. We lift up to you those who are angry, those who want to fight, those who live in fear, those who fear change, and those who are desperate for change. We lay them all in front of you, O oh God and ask for the courage to be your ambassadors of peace. To be willing to stand in between, to stand in the gap. Help us be your voice of love, compassion, mercy, comfort, peace, patience, gentleness, generosity. And when we feel the pressure rising within us, 
Remind us to let it go, to take time to be with you, O God, that we can return to the place of being the peacemakers. All this we ask in the name of the Christ. Amen. This was my grandmother's favorite hymn. Okay, go ahead. Cora. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. If you get there before I do, Coming for to carry me home. Tell all my friends I'm coming to. Coming for to carry me home. I'm sometimes up, I'm sometimes down. Coming for to carry me home. But still my soul feels heavenly bound, coming for to carry me home. The brightest day that I can say, coming for to carry me home. When Jesus washed my sins away, Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. I invite you to now take your bread and your juice and follow along with me in our liturgy for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those who we name before you. Monty Leffler. Carol Ayers, Rawe Abdi, John Lewis, the many lives. We lost to gun violence this year for those unjustly killed, for those who have taken their own lives. For the family that we have lost and still mourn. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray with the confidence of children our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread and we break it.
open. Because there's one loaf from which we all share. I invite you to raise your cup because it is from one cup that we all drink. It is from the one body of Christ that we all come together. I invite you to share communion with anyone who is with you, knowing that we are sharing this communion together. The body of Christ given for you, the cup of salvation given for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Let it bless us, nourish us. Let it bring to life your love in us that we may be your light and your hands and feet for the world to be the just, the merciful, the peacemakers, the humble. Vulnerable enough to mourn, to be poor, All this we ask in the name of the Christ. Amen. In the Methodist tradition, once we have consecrated the bread and juice, uh, we cannot waste it. It is holy. And so I invite you to eat all of the bread and drink all of the juice. If you are unable to do that, then we return it to the earth and to creation. So you can scatter the bread for the birds um, and the squirrels, and you can pour the juice into the earth. Some glad morning when this life is over, I away, away to a home on God's celestial shore. to close and we prepare to go out into the world again 
I invite you to carry with you the light of Christ and of the saints that go before us. Remember that the cloud of witnesses are there in front of us, encouraging us on. They have walked in our shoes. They've experienced hard times. They've experienced joy. And they have had their time to stand in the gap. Remember, you are a child of God. That the Christ redeems us. And the Spirit sustains us and leads us forth. Go in peace. Amen.